Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today I thought we could talk about my planning process when it comes to a new project. Now, if you saw last week's video, you will know that I put a poll in the video between two projects, and one of them definitely won over the other one. Nearly 400 people voted and the ship captain's den won out. And a lot of you suggested the captain's quarters and so that's going to be the official name of this project, the captain's quarters. Now if you chose the king's tomb and that is not the project that won, don't worry I am not scrapping that project. That may be something we come back to in the future so no worries. One of the things I felt like was missing with the abandoned coffee shop is I never really discussed with you how I came up with the idea, how I planned out my project. I actually started the series with the walls already put up and then I went back and was like, hey, maybe you guys would like to see this process and showed you how I made the brick and there were a few things I skipped at the beginning. So with this new project, I decided to start from the very beginning, which is the planning stage. So right now I am sketching down some ideas that I have in my head. The first thing I do, absolutely first thing I do, is go to Google and do a Google image search with just some key phrases like um, captain's den, captain's quarters, um, ships, things like that to kind of get some inspiration. And then I take those images and try to create my own image in my head and then I try to draw it out. And a lot of this will change. This is me just trying to get a feel for what I want to see, the atmosphere that I want, um, some of the details that I feel like are key. So in looking at the images I found online, one of the things that was really apparent is this bay of windows, which is this pretty much in every single captain's quarters image that I saw because it's supposed to be the very end of the ship and there is a row of windows and it's just very iconic. So I knew I had to put those in there. And now I'm drawing out the desk. I thought it'd be really cool if the desk was actually a ship with like a glass top, but I don't know. That was just one idea that was in my head. And then I started drawing a modern lamp and then I had to go back and draw a gas lamp. And so there will be a lot of that, me trying to go from the modern look that I was doing with the abandoned coffee shop and transitioning my brain into um, a different time era. And that's part of the planning process and part of thinking through things is making sure that you get down the details that are correct and accurate for your project. So now that I've done the initial sketch that I had in my head, I want to do some, some more like, I don't know how to say this, like architectural planning, although nothing straight, nothing is used with a ruler at this point. I'm just trying to get things on the paper so that I can see them, I can maybe see where the problems are. So right now I've decided that I think this is going to be a two story project in one of the images I was looking at that had a cross section of a ship. Um, it seemed like the captain's quarters would be one of the top rooms below deck, and then there would be other rooms below it. So um, because this is a ship captain that is going to be maybe showing off his ship creations, I wanted him to have a display room. So I feel like it would have made sense for him to take over a room that was below his quarters and possibly turn that into a display for all his ship creations. So that's the idea I'm trying to get out of my head onto the paper at this moment. So I have his uh, quarters upstairs, which is his desk, maybe where he works, maybe where he sleeps. And then below is his very special room where he shows off the ships he has created. So once I have that idea, I wanna start planning out a basic floor plan. Again, none of this is measured. It's all just straight out of my head, helping me get an idea for the space, for what items, big items, I'm not going into details as like, um, I want a coat over here or I want um, anything like that. I just want it to be the big items that I know are going to be in the space. I wanna make sure that I put those down 
and sort out my initial thoughts. Now one thing I realized I did need to look up, I decided I wanted a spiral staircase and I don't know anything about spiral staircases so I did want to see if this was even a possible thing that I could put in a ship area. So I did look up to see if there were even spiral staircases in ships and I found a little bit of evidence that there might have been. And then I also wanted to look up the diameter of a spiral staircase because if it was like eight feet across that would be a very difficult thing to put into a project that's already pretty small and compact. Now the first drawing I did was the first floor of the ship or the top not the first the top floor which would be the captain's quarters and so I'm just flipping back and forth to try to get a similar shape to create the lower level which would be kind of the display area where the ships would be on display. This is actually not what I ended up going with, but again, this is all a process of just getting my ideas out and on paper. A lot of times you won't know how you feel about an idea until you see it. Um, sometimes in our head we're like, oh yeah, that'll work, that'll work, but we need to actually like get it down, get it out, and kind of flush out everything that we're thinking. So for the display area, I want it to be these wooden cases with openings that have an individual space for each ship. And I did put a chair in the middle there. Maybe he goes down and looks at the ships. Um, I'm not really sure yet, but from this viewpoint, I have the opening of the project facing the captain's desk and I don't end up going with that in the end. And this whole process is what helped me kind of figure out what I want my viewpoint to be. So right now I'm taking a ruler trying to figure out what uh, some sizes here. I realized the circle I drew was about five centimeters across and that the uh, diameter of a staircase is about five centimeters. So I am going to, for the rest of this project, probably annoy everybody who loves the metric system and I'm going to um, kind of estimate one foot equals one centimeter. And in my project, it's actually gonna be a 12 scale. So uh, one centimeter is gonna equal one inch. And I probably just confused a bunch of people. But this is just, I don't know, it's working in my brain. Whatever uh, works for your brain is what you need to do. But this is just me sharing what is going on in my head. Um, and then I also kind of figured out that um, from what I have right here, it'd be about 18 inches wide, 18 inches deep, and then about um, 16 inches tall because I want to have eight foot ceilings for each um, of the floors. Now this is where I changed gears and I decided I wanted to see what it would look like if I was viewing this from the side, which means one of the side walls of the captain's quarters would be removed. And the reason I did this is because I wanted to put in the doors. I want to put the door into the captain's quarters. I wanted to make it look like a complete room. And so um, if I had kept the viewpoint from the um, looking towards the desk, you would not have seen the door. So I decided to try and draw out a side view with similar ideas, just kind of placing them in different places. And then below I went ahead and just drew tinier versions of the floor plans with, um, with the side view in mind. So um, sometimes if you're kind of stuck with how you want to do a project, you can kind of figure out, okay, well, maybe if I remove a different wall, I'll get a better view for the things that I want to see. And you can kind of play back and forth with those ideas with miniatures. Oftentimes you need to have a wall removed, um, unless you're just going to have the ceiling removed. I mean, you have to see into your project somehow. So um, it's really fun to play with that idea of what part of your, of your project are people going to have to imagine. Once I had decided on the side view being what I really want to pursue, I'm going to use measurements to draw a more accurate floor plan. Like I said, I'm going to drive my metric friends crazy, but I'm going to do one centimeter equals one foot. 
which means when I start building this in 12 scale, one centimeter is going to equal one inch. Now the first line I drew on here, I can tell from my video, is crooked, but I end up using this triangle tool, and this is a really helpful tool to get um, 90 degree angles if you're trying to draw those in. So I highly suggest those. You can get them at most craft stores or any place where you can get architectural materials. And um, so I use this to try and keep fairly 90 degree angles as I'm drawing. And um, one thing about the planning stage is this is just for you. Obviously I'm sharing it in a video for everyone to see, but um, usually I don't show a lot of my planning drawings and so they do not have to be pretty. They don't have to look nice. It's just for me to flush out my ideas onto paper. What has to look nice is the project in the end and the more problems I flush out in the planning stage, the better that will go for me. So here I'm putting in some windows, I'm putting in an accurate measurement for how much room the spiral staircase is going to take up, I'm uh, trying to figure out the um, best size for a desk, some chairs, and you can see a door kind of marked out on the left. So I'm just trying to get the big size players um, in on the paper. So I really like that floor plan. I only did one floor plan uh, for the bottom floor, but I decided to take a break. Sometimes it's nice to take a break. And I wanted to show you guys um, all my ships that I've collected. So this was my uh, first ship. It's called the Golden Hind. It's the only one with a name. And I got that at one of my very first uh, mini Sam trips. This is my second one. The second and third one I got together at uh, the Dallas Miniature Showcase, I think two years ago, I purchased these. And really these three first ones were the ones that kind of started my obsession. And this third one that I have is my largest ship, and this was sent to me by Carol. She's so awesome, so sweet to think of me, and I will link, um, I'll put a link to her Facebook below. She actually makes her own minis, and they're really amazing, so be sure to check her out. But she sent me this ship, and then she also sent me this really cool golden plate, and it has a ship engraved in it, so I definitely want to include that as well. And then the next three ships you will have already seen. They are the three ships that I purchased at this past show in the in last um, in the last video that y'all watched where I did my haul. Um, these were the three ships that I purchased, and I love that they're all just a little bit different. And I do, I'm telling you guys this so I don't wimp out. I do want to try to make my own ship and I want to kind of look up some famous ships like even like some fictional ships like maybe the Black Pearl. Um, if you have any suggestions for um, ships put them in the comments below I'd love to hear or other um, miniatures that you think would add to this project. I also have this little boat. He doesn't quite fit in with the others and so I think I might save him for another project. I'm thinking maybe like a toy shop or something. Um, he just doesn't quite fit in but he's still part of my ship collection. <laughs> So once I've got um, my ships all together, these guys actually stay in a glass case that I have in my office. So I'm gonna put those back in there. But I wanted to go ahead and pull out some of my miniature storage. This is another thing I like to do whenever I'm starting a project. This is another part of my planning um, process. Typically I have items that I've purchased at one point because I like them, because they are my style, but um, they don't always get used right away. And so I have miniature storage. And so I go in there and I just start pulling out things that I think will work and I start dedicating them towards this project. So um, the first thing I pulled out was like a little wax candle type thing. It was kind of gold and metallic-y looking. And then I had a couple candle holders and um, I thought I pulled out this vase. I have two of them. Um, I just pulled it out as kind of a maybe miniature and I can always go back and um, I have quite a few vases so I can pick out ones that I think um, might go with the ambiance or go with the color scheme. But by pulling it out right now, it just reminds me, oh yeah, maybe I can add some vases. Maybe they're um, something that he's collected all along the way in his journey. 
Now I'm going to go through each one of these and I'm probably going to get comments of I want to see everything that's in there. Um, a lot of these things will probably show up in future videos and in future projects. Uh, this little book I thought was adorable. It was made by my friend Victoria Dark Squirrel for the Adamses, and um, if it doesn't end up in the Adamses, it probably will end up in the Captain's Quarters. I thought it would be a good book. I mean, a lot of captains have books about, um, you know, faraway places and stuff, so I thought one on botany would be a great one to have in there. Um, let's see, what else? Really, there's just a lot of little knickknacks. Um, oh, I found these uh, matches. It's like a little holder for matches, and of course, I think that would be great for a ship, especially one that's more um, accustomed to gas lamps and candles rather than traditional electrical lighting. And then I found this uh, little wine opener. You know, ship captains gotta have their um, wine of course <laughs> and that was a miniature made by right guides miniature which unfortunately is no longer around i don't think um and then i did find these little wine glasses and it's hard for you to see i'll do a closer up view of it in a second but it does have one wine glass that is spilled and then the others are full so i thought that would be fun to maybe put on the desk or maybe on like a planning table that he might have and then a plate of course for some snacks and that might be all I found in there. Yeah. I only have six of these to go through. <laughs> I don't think I find anything in here. Um, I have a few little papers and I might at some point add some papers. Oh, what did I find? Oh, those are my miniatures from Ron's class that I have still have not finished yet because I need to recut the driftwood. And thank you so much to everyone who helped me figure out the word driftwood from the last video. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Um, but then I have these little stained stacks of paper, which I might add in. But I definitely want to per pull out the miniatures I made in Ron's class because it's the two sharks and the whale. So I will be making sure to put those in my project because they're perfect for that. In here I have a lot of body parts and uh, metal pieces. So definitely we need a skull. We might need two. I have a whole little section of skulls there so we could possibly pull out. I'm just gonna pull out one for now because that helps me rem remember that you know a skull would be a good option. I have this little metal globe which I think would be obviously perfect for someone in a ship. And what else? Um, oh I found this little um, metal like foo dog sculpture so I thought that would be cool too I want it to you know look like he's collected several things from his travels and so I'll have those items kind of sitting around his quarters um, I also have these little lamps I figured they could look as though they were gas lamps they are electric obviously I'm not gonna put gas and fire in my miniature project um, but I need to figure out if they actually work I think I got them for I don't know, just a few dollars, but I'm not sure that they actually work. So I'm going to have to get uh, Mr. Technology on that to see if we can save those guys. And then in my last little box here, um, what did I pull out of here? I think um, I had a few statues. Oh yeah, I pulled out a bust. You know, you always have to have a bust of some random important person and so I don't know who that guy is but um, we'll just pull out a bust and oh I pulled out a frame and this one had kind of a very um, frilly kind of a Victorian look to it so I don't know if that's too late in the time frame I'll have to figure out the exact years that I'm going for um, but really what I'm doing right now is just pulling out miniatures that kind of inspire the look that I'm going for and whenever I am working on this project I'll have these miniatures you know in the vicinity and I can kind of be inspired by them because they're already finished miniatures and so I'll be finishing my project to go along with some of these pieces that are just getting me more excited about creating this project.
One thing I like to do whenever I've pulled miniatures for a project is put them in their own containers. Now these are crayon cases and you can get them during back to school time. They're so the kids don't have to mess with the crayon box. They just put them in these little boxes. They stack really well. They have little clamps on the side to keep the top um, on them and they just work really well for containing miniatures at least for me and so I have done this for my Fairfield project I've done this for um, I did it for the abandoned coffee shop you might have seen at some point I just anything that wasn't glued down I would put in these little boxes and just keep them with the project and because they're clear I can keep an eye on what I already have and just keep it with all my items that goes along with this project so if you're interested in these um, yeah just I mean it's back to school time right now so keep an eye out for them they're called crayon boxes and uh, yeah they're just really useful okay so I realized after I took my awesome break looking through miniatures that's always you know really fun um, I realized I still didn't have a firm idea of how I wanted to proceed with this project because a big part of it is going to be building this two-story um, ship building it's just part of a ship and so I decided to create a really rough 3d model with cardboard this is a really helpful way to kind of get your ideas out in 3d in 2D, as in me just drawing on the paper, I really wasn't getting a feel for the slanted walls. I wasn't getting a feel for how everything looked in the space. I, you know, I didn't draw like a ceiling plan to show the beams. Um, and so I just, I thought that this would be, for this particular project, a really good idea to just flush out this quick, um, really rough model. So I'm just using some cardboard that came with some Amazon packages and I'm just going to throw it together. It took me about two or three hours and I'm using my first floor plan that I drew kind of as a guide and this is going to help me mock up the captain's quarters that is on the top floor and um, I'm just going to put it next to my floor plan, mark out where the windows are and just glue it to the floor plan. Now this is a really fast way to do this. You don't have to worry about it looking good. You don't have to worry about cutting all the parts perfect because I'm using hot glue and cardboard. And so if I don't have a long enough piece, I can just hot glue it to another piece. So it's not going to look pretty. It's not going to be something I want to show anybody. Um, I'm showing you guys because this has been part of my planning process for this project. I didn't feel like I needed to do this for the abandoned coffee shop because it was one room with two walls. So it really wasn't as important for me to figure out the 3D spaces and how the actual structure goes together. But for this project, I really needed to see it so that I can, like I said before, find the problems early and then um, not have to recut my final materials so often because cardboard um, comes cheap. And, um, you know, when I'm done with this, I can just throw it into the recycle bin and I don't even have to worry about it. But the products that I'm going to be using to build the captain's quarters are going to be a little bit of an investment. And so if I can figure out what works and what doesn't work in cardboard first, then I don't have to waste those materials when I get to the final project also really easy if you don't like something you just rip it out recut it re-glue it and um, yeah so it's just I, I find it really helpful the thing that I'm building right now around the hole where the spiral staircase is I want to make kind of a curved bookcase back there in the corner so obviously I'm adding a little bit more detail than I normally would but I couldn't in my head figure out how to do it so I was just playing around with some ideas that may not be how I end up doing it but um, it really kind of helped me just, uh, you know, figure out my brain, <laughs> make a map through what I was thinking, basically. And I also put in the desk and the map table that I had um, drawn in my floor plan so that I could just kind of see it in the space, see how much headroom there was going to be. And I temporarily taped on a roof. I'm not going to glue it on so that if I do want to measure something or look at something a little closer in my model, I can just take the roof off. But um, it helps you see the space. 
And so for this project, it's, it's a low ceiling and that helps give the feeling of captain's quarters because a ship does not have infinite amount of ceiling room because, you know, they have to build the rest of the ship over and underneath the captain's quarters. The proportions of your project can really help sell the idea of the space that you're trying to create. So if I'm creating a ballroom, yes, I need ample ceiling space. If I'm creating captain's quarters, it needs to be a little bit squished. <laughs> and so that's what I'm checking here. Now I made this little um, badly made spiral staircase on a pencil, just kind of as a check to see how it works, correlating between the bottom floor and the top floor of the space. And I also wanted to see if I liked there being a pole that went from the bottom to the top. And um, I'll just reuse that pencil later, but right now it's going to be a pole. And here on the bottom you can see um, it's a bit of a simpler space. These two are going to be cut um, particularly to fit the ships that I have. I have a doorway and I'm not quite sure what to put there in the middle, um, but really this whole thing is just helping me see the interior space and the exterior space because it's a little bit weirdly shaped on the outside. I think it looks right on the inside for being a ship, but I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna display it. How am I gonna finish the exterior of this project? So I added a few photos in here so you can get kind of a eye line view of what these look like. Like I said, it's not pretty, but it's definitely helped me flush out my initial ideas on the captain's quarters. Thank you guys so much for voting. I am really excited for this project. As always, like with the abandoned coffee shop, leave your ideas and suggestions below. I always love hearing what you guys come up with. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you liked seeing a little bit of my planning process. Let me know if it could help you or if, or you, if you have a different process. I'd love to know about that too. You guys have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye.